There have been rumors about domestic violence in my home. There have been so many. When we have a We've position had like that, ours, yeah. yes. And I want to address that. If a man hits you once, it's too many times. Oh, Jesus. If you are in a marriage and you have children and you want to try counseling, you can try what you can try. But if he's still hitting, hitting you, my you. dear, you pack your bags and you get out. Full stop. Ladies, ladies, ladies. I know a God that fulfills purpose. I know a God. You are all invited to the Daughters of Zion meeting to be held on Saturday, the 29th of June, 2013, hosted by Reverend Kathy Q. God is not moved by crowd. He's moved by individual. Ah, there is a personal God that we need to know like David. I don't care if you think I'm late. I know a God who never delays. I know a God who never discourages. Purpose to attend. Daughters of Zion, raising the standard among women. You're welcome to Women Without Limits. We started a program last Sunday, and we were talking to Julie Gishoro, and guess what? She's here. We are continuing where we stopped last week. I know you are absolutely blessed, and I tell you, invite your friends to watch, because today we are taking it even a notch higher. And today we want to talk about uh, Julie's marriage, because I know you've been wondering, okay, is she married? Does she have this? Da, da, da. So today we are finding out something else about her. You are welcome, Julie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it, we started last week and, and it was really so much fun. Just getting to know where you're coming from, knowing that you, you adored your grandma mm. <laughs> and that they played a, a pivotal role in your life. That's amazing. Thank and you. I believe that somebody has gotten uh, uh, something like, uh, you know, to, to take um, their grandparents seriously and to love them and to pay attention really mm. to them. Because in our generation, a lot of people just don't want to. It's like we're forgetting our grandparents and our roots, where we're coming Absolutely. from. Which is, uh, and it's so important for us to always remember where we are coming from. I mean, history is so powerful. It is. It's so it powerful. Is. And so today we want to find out now, Julie, you took it to another level. <laughs> <laughs> and you met this man. I met this man. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Because now there you are before working and working and taking care of all these people. Now here you are, somebody wants to take care of you suddenly. I met this man. Uh -huh. Now let me tell you the bizarre thing. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I saw him yeah. was two years before this. And we just met and said hello and that was it. But oddly enough, mm. something struck me about him. Wow. So two years later we meet and we're having a conversation. And this conversation centers on God and love for our mothers. Wow. <laughs> so it was really bizarre because um, there was just a connection. Yeah. And I always feel it's like God brought us together. Two very powerful forces wow. together in a very crazy world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's 14 years this year. Whoa. Yes, it's 14 years yeah. this year and wow. 10 years of marriage. So, um, oh. yes. But what was it? I thought he was handsome. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is pretty good looking. Yeah, good. Um, so, you know, that's the physical. Yeah. But um, very intelligent, mm -hmm. very articulate, mm -hmm. um, and again, just something about his love for God. Yeah. And I, I just felt when you love God that much, and he spoke Something about his blessed. mom. Yes, and, and loving he, his mom as well. well and you know, you know what they say? They mm -hmm. say that if your husband loves the mother, you're in good hands. You're in good hands. You know, that's and what I, they say. And that's why I never understand. It's so interesting, Kathy. I've never understood 
this tension yeah. between mother-in-laws and their daughters mm. or this competition because the more he loves his mother and if you can be his mother's friend yeah then as you've said you've you know you're in safe attention. hands yes you know yes. you're in safe hands exactly. so why aren't you batting for the same team yeah. <laughs> instead of thinking this is team separate yeah. here only team ingine come together and yeah. i'm not saying it's always easy yeah i'm not saying it's always easy but Sometimes you can make it, can it. again we go back to building yes. and destroying yes if you're a wise woman then work with him then you can make work it. with you him especially if the mother is not coming to control your home because now that's the other and it dimension. may it may ha i was very blessed my mother-in-law is very hands-off mm. and always came with gifts and love mm. and with a willing ear to listen she was a very strong woman and um, I, I see, when I look at who she was, mm -hmm. it's like a mirror Whoa. that, you know, there are many things about her that are very similar to, to me. She was a very feeling person and could relate mm -hmm. to very many people. Yeah. And for me, that again was a, was a gift. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, but his relationship with his mother was, was amazing. And I always think, if, if you lead a man to disrespect his mother, what do you expect him to do to you? He's going to disrespect what you so you bad. Expect? No respect for you at all. At right, all. Right. Yeah. So I was so happy when I heard him talk about his mother. And, and, yeah. and I heard, uh, you know, I could see the kind of woman that she was coming through. Mm. And we talked about God. And, and just a, a, a connection was established on wow. the first time that we had a conversation. Wow. That's awesome. Uh -huh. And then we built a friendship. Yeah. It took quite a while and we built a friendship. Did you I know anything apart from now that connection of, okay, you've talked about God and, and mother. Did he say anything? Did he say anything or it was just, okay, we, he's we a knew, friend? We knew each other pretty well because yeah. he, my best friend yeah. is called Anne. Okay. Her brother, her elder brother, John, is his best friend. Now, it just happens. Okay. My best friend has been my best friend since Form 1. Until today, we are sisters. It just so happened that through our whole life from Form 1 till I was 25, we had never been in the country at the same time or I had been in boarding school, so I had never seen him. Although uh, these two siblings yes. had, you know, the two of us very close. So I knew of him for a yeah, long time, yeah. but I had never met him and had a conversation with him. Okay. And in fact, the first time he expressed an interest in me, my best friend's brother, John, said to him, no, this is a good girl. <laughs> so he said, no, this is like my younger, this is like my younger sister. Yes, you yeah. know, I'm not comfortable with, yeah. I'm not entirely comfortable with this. So we used yeah. to joke. We used to joke about that a lot. But ultimately, the, the, my best friend's father, who I call dad, yeah. he also calls dad. Okay. So there, there are very many things that interlinked for us. Okay. But we just happened to meet yeah. at, at this time yeah. in life. Yes. And then he expressed interest in you? Yes, he uh -huh. did. Um, I was very interested, but I was not sure if <laughs> I should be overt. You know, and, <laughs> yes, you're not quite sure how to approach it. Yeah. So, but we, we kept meeting and kept talking and uh, it, it just developed. Yeah. And the chemistry just The worked. chemistry just developed and, yeah. you know, it's funny because we never even talked about it. Then we started a deeper relationship mm. and we, we never, I was in a rebellious phase. And maybe this is important to mention. Wow. Because oh, when of you my met parents' him. Di divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I was very angry with my dad. Yeah. And I was in a space mentally where I didn't believe marriage worked. So I've always talked to God in my life. I've always talked to God. Yeah. And so I used to say to God, you know, Father, hold on to me. Hold mm. on to me. Don't let me go. But I'm not very happy <laughs> <laughs> about A, B, C, D. Yes. So I'm still trying to deal with it. Mm. And just allow me to do things a My little way bit of your now. obvio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me put it that way. But hold, hold on to me. I used to go on my knees and tell him, please hold on to me mm. and don't let me go. Yeah. But I was very angry. And so I didn't believe marriage worked. Mm. So I, I kind of, you know, we were in a relationship. Mm. We were in love. And even when he broached the subject of marriage, yeah. I was like, we don't have to. It's not necessary. Yeah, we are in love and, mm. and we can still have a family, but we don't have to get married. And those are modern notions of, mm. you know. Yeah. And so I was thinking I was going through my own Yes. My own phases. So it must have really, really hurt you, perhaps even beyond words. 
Maybe you couldn't even articulate, you couldn't explain mm -hmm. how painful it was for your parents to divorce. It was. You know, it is these kind of things now that open your eyes. Like, I, mm -hmm. I surely must have been hurt. Yes. Because then you are reacting. I was saying, I don't want that pain. Yeah. So yeah. if you go into a commitment like that, yeah. and that's a kind of, uh, that, that's what you're getting yeah. after everything you've invested, yeah. then it's okay. Yeah. It's not worth it. What you can do is mentally just go through life, mm. but not have to deal with... Don't marry and divorce. Yes, don't yeah. marry and divorce. Let's just, let's just, we're committed, we're mm. together, and, and it's okay. Why do we have to have these norms and mm. these pressures? So all the aunties, you can imagine. Mm. All the aunties, said, ah, yeah. This is, it doesn't work like this. Yeah. My relationship with God was still very, very close. Yeah. And I think he did hold on to me. Oh. Because he made me see the light. the light. Like it doesn't have to go that way. You don't have to be scared. Yes. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to. Yeah. Make, a, make a full commitment yeah. and, and, and all this. So, yeah. And eventually when, you know, Tony said, no, we're, we have to get we're tying the knot. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> we're tying the knot. And yeah. we had had two, two children by then. So Kimosho and Jerry were born. We were in a committed marriage as far as I was mentally concerned. But yeah. I was still willing to kind of think it's okay yeah but it's not okay yes and um he said no we're tying the knot and he said and your father must give you away oh he said the wazes must meet and we what let's you let's go see that yeah let's go see let's that. make it and right that, let's do it the right and proper that way. is where my healing started was when i was able to sit with my dad and look at my father and say I'm getting married. And I think also for him, he must have been worried about me. What's this girl doing? I've invested so much in her. Now she's just gone like all these others. You know, that must have been what he was thinking. And so when we went to sit with him and say, no, dad, we want you to come. Um, I would like you to bless this. And, mm. uh, and of course, I'm coming to him after the fact. Yeah. You know. Yes. Which is, but he had it in his heart to say, you're my daughter and I love you. And I'm so happy that you've come to ask me to play this role Whoa. and he came in and just seeing you know it all come together for me is where I started to find the healing, the healing. within my soul to let go of the anger and the devastation that was caused by, by their my parents split yeah mm. so you agreed and then you now tied the knot we tied the knot when's this now 10 years ago this is 10 years ago yeah so we celebrate we're doing a Thanksgiving in November this year just to say thank you Lord yeah and I can't believe it's 10 years I'm as in love with him as I was I think I'm more in love with him actually <laughs> yeah 14 what? years down the line <laughs> I think there are two things yeah that contribute to that mm. number one is that you don't own anybody so it's understanding that when you're in a marriage, mm. it's a choice mm. by you and it's a choice by your partner. Yeah. And just appreciating that fact, because I think it's very easy to start to believe you belong here and you belong to me. Yeah. And therefore, you know, there's an element of ownership. Mm. No, the only people we belong to, the only person, the only entity we belong to is God. Is God. That's it. We, nobody belongs, even my yeah. children. Yeah. They are God's. They are God's children, are God's. much as I carried just, them and delivered yeah, them. Yeah. So understanding that and, and able, you're able to look at someone and say, you choose yeah. to wake up with me in the morning. Oh. You choose to go to bed with me at night. Yeah. You choose to have children with me. You know, that's amazing. Yeah. And also, I think we should allow ourselves the room to fall in love over and over again. Over and over. It's with true. the same person, it's though. True. Yeah. But over of and over again. The same because person. because you, you're <laughs> learning more about each other yes. as you go along. Yeah. They so. say actually it gets better. And, and you sweeter. know, you're a witness. <laughs> yeah. It gets sweeter in every way. Yes. In every way. You know what? People keep asking us how our marriage is working. And yeah. really, all I can say is that because it, it, we belong to God and it's God that really takes care of us. And we've made a deliberate choice. Choice. So, choice. choice. <laughs> so the love keeps increasing right. by the day. I'm right. glad you, you share the same. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, and it's fun, and yeah. it's fun, and you're able to laugh and play and, yeah. and cry together. You've got, to, you know, you go through the tough times mm. together, and mm. but you know. So that's how you got married yes. and 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 uh, tied knot, and now your friends, your buddies. So you and your husband are friends. We're buddies. Yeah, we're buddies. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, we're buddies. <laughs> <laughs> 
where fun is. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Now here you are. You are in the limelight. Mm -hmm. You know, you are in the limelight. I mean, everybody, young, old, know, knows who Julie is. Mm -hmm. My question is because you see, Tony is really in the background of Julie. Julie's at the forefront. You're on, on screen for crying out loud. So everybody knows Julie. How is that? How does that work? Initially, I think when I first started my yeah. career, it was very hard for Tony. Because mm. everybody would know me. They'd all want to come into our space. And I think he was trying to, how do I deal Work with, with this. this? Yeah, how do I deal with this? Yeah. But he found his space very quickly. And in fact, I'm very oblivious, by the way. Mm. To, when I walk, I walk like this. It's a very dangerous thing. Mm. <laughs> I don't notice. I kind of, I'm very focused on my purpose. So even when I walk in Nakumat or, you know, I don't notice, but he always notices and encourages me to, to, to talk to people, wave at these people. But this is, that's on a very superficial level. Mm. Just moving to the next level, mm. which is as, as a couple with two very different roles. Tony doesn't like the limelight, so for him it works very well. Mm. And what he has done with me, you know, there have been moments in my career where you just, you want to give up where you want to say, I'm so tired, I'm, I, I don't know what's next, mm. I can't do this, or I really want to do this and I can't. And he plays an incredible role mm. as the encourager. Wow. The like challenger on, and the like encourager. Do it. Yes. Yeah. Like, how can you say that you're a child of God if you're going to be scared to do that? You can't be a child of God if you're scared of that. You know, he'll say to me, don't cry. If you need to make a change, what change do you need to make? We will make it. Oh, oh my! You know that those are the kinds of so. So that's what th that's the role that for me and, and and I always say you know the way they say that behind every successful man is a is a great As a woman. woman. Yeah. But let's recognize the men yeah. that support successful women, and there Thank are very you. many as well. Thank you. And and Thank and you. that's a huge and that's role a real man. man. For that's a, a man. man, that's a real man. <laughs> By the way, that's not a boy. <laughs> that's a man. <laughs> that's a man. Because for a man, honestly, yeah. to support you, to see you in the limelight, to see everybody knows you, to see all that, and still work with you, and not just work with you, but encourage you and add you on, right. like push you forward, that's a real man. So I'm at the World Economic Forum. Mm. I've been doing interviews all day. Mm. I'm really tired. I call home. Daniel is not well, mm. you know, and, and, you know, there's things going on and he'll tell me, honey, guess what? He was taken to the doctor. It's done. I've handled ABCD. You continue. And, and he, he's one person. He'll call in the morning. I'll speak to the kids. We'll definitely speak in the evening. I'll speak to the kids. And so I have the strength of knowledge mm. that family is fine. Everything's yeah. okay at yeah. home. So you can focus on... You can, you, can, you can fly. You can fly. You can fly. Yeah. And when you say that's a strong man, mm. that's a man. Yeah, that's true. That's because, mm. you know, my definition of a husband mm. is, is, you know, the, the place in the Bible where it says Jesus is the head of the home. Yes. Is somebody who would sacrifice for his family. Yes. Who would do anything for his family. That's, that's, that's amazing. And as a woman, mm. that makes me willing to do anything no th that back. kind of a man you, know? you can love him you can call <laughs> you can do anything absolutely <laughs> that kind absolutely. of man i mean whatever he says jump you just ask how high yes yes you know yes. <laughs> you know because uh, he's in charge right and then right. he's telling you honey go on i'm, I'm taking control right. of this area so you know you can so high because can you imagine if you were calling from outside maybe out of the country, and he's not at home or he's not taking, he doesn't know anything. Or, or, or you know, the kids <laughs> are with the, you know, uh, the nanny and yeah. she's telling me where she, yeah. you know, We no, don't have this and that. It's amazing. And you know, I want to, because there have been rumors about domestic violence in my home. There have been so many, when we have a We've position like that. ours, yeah. yes, and I want to address that. So mm. there are two things I want to say. Mm. Number one, me, I, I honestly believe the devil has a way of trying to create chaos. Yeah. And you take a role model like Julie and try to convince women that it's okay to be hit. Because if Julie Gishuru is hit, then it's okay. Do you understand the power of yeah. that rumor? Yeah. It's so beyond even yeah. Tony and I. Yeah. I, if a man hits you once, it's too many times. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Once, once oh. is too many it's times. Too and many. if you are not in a marriage, once he has hit you once, 
you make sure you're out of that relationship. If you are in a marriage and you have children and you want to try counseling, you can try what you can try. But if he's still hitting, hitting you, my you. dear, you pack your bags and you get out. You know, Julie, full stop. You know what? You know what? I told somebody the other day that if you are allowing your husband to beat on you, then you are an enabler. You, you, that's what you're doing. Let's talk more about that. Yeah. Let's talk more about yeah. that. Because I, I have someone in my family who has been through that for years. Mm. And we took their children in. Me and this husband of mine called Tony being accused of being mm. a, wife a wife beater. beater. Took in the children of a couple that were fighting so mm. that we would not have to subject them into that, that violence. Yeah. So they lived in our home. They've even left now and gone to, to college. But uh, so all their lives, since it, actually the day I gave birth to my first child, mm. they came to the hospital and told us what happened that night. Small children, mommy and daddy, and this is what happened. And I said to my husband at the hospital bed, honey, take them home with you. I will sort it out with their parents, but these children now, they are ours. They will live mm. with us. They will not ever, ever see Go that violence that. again. So I believe that you cannot, as a woman, when you are hit, you're deciding to accept that. Mm. You're making a choice. You're subjecting your children yes. to the consequences. Yes, yes. It is wrong. It is wrong. It is absolutely yeah. wrong to bring children up in that environment. Yes. And I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, I heard the excuses school fees for the children. Mm. See, we had taken the children in already. Mm. So we said, we've taken the children. Why are you still staying? Yeah. Or school fees for the children. Guess what? We'll pay school fees for the children. So they're living in our house and eating their food. Yeah. Our food. We'll pay school fees for the children. Oh, no. Another excuse comes. Another excuse comes. It's now 15 years down the line. Bado uko hapo. Being beaten. The two of and you together. Treated. But you're in love. So you have made your consequence, you have made your decision, let the consequences now be yours, oh but do not blame anybody. Don't blame anybody else. Don't blame anybody. You've taken it in, you've allowed it, so don't blame anybody. If you love yourself, I will say it again, do not stay where you are being battered because by enabling him, you are also destroying his life. Yes, exactly. You're also destroying exactly. him. By the way, you're not helping him you're at all. You're not helping him. So the two I of you. Say, yeah, I say, you know what? You separate until he gets help. If he gets help and gets healed out of that because it's a sickness. If he gets help, by the way, it's so psychiatric, it's mm. unbelievable. And that guy needs help. If he gets help, then you can come back together. And sometimes but he has to get help. He has to get, he needs yeah, help. He needs help. You should not be abused, mm. period. And, and I, I believe even when people are rude to me, mm. I, I can't, you can't even talk to me badly. Yeah. And then I keep you in my space, <laughs> let alone hit me. Yeah. That's because I have a lot of respect for myself. Yes. So it means that you, you maybe have issues yourself yeah. that you need to go yeah, you're bringing to for me. counseling. Yes. You need to go and, and, and deal. So both the husband and the wife in, mm. a, in a relationship mm. like that need help. So please, I just want to tell anybody who has bought into that lie, yeah. do not accept abuse, mm. verbal or physical. It is wrong. N number two, um, Family is, is so critical, and yeah. the role of the father is so important. Mm. It destroys me to look at Tony and feel like anybody is trying to undermine the amazing man yeah. that, he, that is. he is. I feel sad that it's, it's being st someone's trying to steal it. But you know what the truth mm. is? I, I always believe the truth will shine out. Yeah, always. And always. you can see the truth. <laughs> if you really you know, care to uh, look for yeah, the truth. You know what? I always say, my, my spiritual mother, Evangelist Warimo, taught us something, and she <laughs> said, as long as it's not true, live it. Yes. It the will take, truth will always come out. It may take time, but yeah. you leave it in God's yeah. hands. Yeah. And, you know, just to encourage men, yeah. take that rightful place yeah. at the helm of your home. Yes. You know, and, and, and take it with love and with confidence and with pride. Yeah. And at no point do you need to show your strength in, in physical. In, yes. Yeah. In physical or even mm. any kind of aggression, mm. even verbal. Yeah. So, you know... Um, even with the children, me, I was chapped by my dad. Sometimes Tony will chap the kids and then yeah. me, I'll be mother hen. Yeah. Although I also chap them a lot. Yeah. But, 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 you know, but, but generally aggression yeah. is not, you, you know, is not, those muscles not are a way to, to show your strength. Muscles, yes. eh? You don't flex them over your wife. 
No, you, know? no, you use no, them for other for things. For protection and yeah. other things. <laughs> <laughs> Those muscles are for love and protection. Exactly. Yeah. And I tell you, Kathy, that is a man. When you are able to, when you lose your son and you're able to go on your knees to God and, 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 and give him everything. So for us as a family, it was the most traumatic thing we've ever been through. Mm. But I think God has held on to both of us. Oh, I'm glad you brought that to light yes. because even I had heard it yes. and I thought, no, mm. no, I know these people. That yeah. cannot be true. But I've also heard a lot about us That's being said. That's what happens. But even everybody, everybody who's watching yeah. has had something awful said about them. Yes. That was not true. Yeah, that was not true. And, it, and yeah. it causes pain. And maybe, you know, it's a good time to warn people who mm. call themselves Christian or yeah. followers of Christ yeah. who are on social media chasing these stories. Exactly. And we saw it recently with, with Caroline Mutoko yeah. and uh, the, the late Senator Mutula Kilonzo. Yeah. How do you steal from Mutula a decent yeah. funeral yeah. with Ruma and innuendo? Yeah. Yeah. How do you take away, and I, I think Caroline addressed it in an article she mm. wrote this week. So it's very important. If mm. you call yourself a follower of Christ, yeah. then Stop live by it. Live by yeah. It, you know. yeah. But you know what, Julie? I think that will always be there because there will always be people who will talk. There are people who have nothing to do. Mm. And you know, it's only small people who talk about people. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, they, they'll always be there yeah, right. uh, talking uh, rubbish. So even my husband and I, we go through that, but we laugh a lot. We just, <laughs> so when we're hear, like, oh, when you no. hear the stories, the ones we hear, some are so hilarious. Oh, no. <laughs> some are so hilarious that, you know, that, I mean, you, you don't even want to say that on air. I mean, this ridiculous like, things. Right. So we hear that, but we, oh, we just laugh about it. Mm -hmm. So you know what, Julie, you know yourself, you know the God that you serve, you know who your husband is, and I'm so glad that you who's watching us by television, you now know. Tony is not like that. <laughs> <You're> not <laughs> but more importantly, yeah. don't subject yourself to it. And this applies both ways, even yeah. to men who mm. are in marriages where they are. Because it's not often, yeah. but it happens too. Yes, yes. It, it does. Don't subject yourself yeah. to it. So you, you are definitely, obviously, enjoying your marriage. I am enjoying my marriage. Yeah. Um, I think it's finding a space in the early years, understanding that it's not a competition. Because I think people go into marriage thinking it's a competition. Yeah. And you've got to one up. Yeah. So I've got to win the argument. Yes. I've got to have the final yes. word, you know? Yeah. No, no, no. I've no, got no, to no. show who I am. Yeah, no. It's I'm a lawyer, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> I went to school. Don't you understand? And I'm a learned <laughs> friend. <laughs> you know? <laughs> No, it's, it's absolutely not. And once you understand that, and I think the secret for women yeah. is if you love your man and you give him unconditional love, you show him love, he feels when he arrives home, this is my haven. Come on. There is nothing else yeah. that you need for your home. Yeah. Because his mind is settled. Yeah. He is happy. Yeah. The children are happy. Mm. So it's about finding that, you know, making sure you find that space where you're not competing, yeah. but you're complementing each, each other. Each mm. other. Exactly. Exactly. Your home must be a haven of peace. Yes. He, it must be so peaceful. He Absolutely. must enjoy the home. You know, so, sometimes we'll have an argument and I'm convinced I'm right. Yeah. I'm sure I'm right. Mm. But guess what? I'll say, honey. If that's what you think, then if I, I want to turn right, you want to turn left. Mm. But guess what? I love you so much. We're turning left. Oh my! Oh, oh! Come on! But now, and guess what? As much as I thought right was right, yeah. I don't even want it anymore because yeah, you want left. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 that is what wow. that is that is what does it yeah. in the home. That's what does it in the right, home. Right. Taking the humility part. Then he'll you say, know, yeah. my love, let's go right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, Julie, aren't we always right at some point? Even <laughs> <laughs> but are we saying we won't no, say? No, we don't say. Yeah. We don't say. We don't say we <laughs> but at the say. end of the day, that's what you're talking about when you say a wise woman builds, a foolish one destroys. destroys. There is a woman that will not turn left. No, she She'd must. rather die. She'd be, what? You are wrong. 
Boy, there, I'm right. There is nothing more important. So yeah. let's let's imagine. Let's take a scenario. Yeah. Of you've invested in a business. Yes. You put yeah. money in a kiosk. Mm. You really your kiosk is nearly working. Yes. It must work. Yes. But you need to pump more money yeah. in. It's causing problems with fi family finances. And he says, now we cut our losses. We go left. Yeah. Right. right. Guess what? That kiosk is nowhere near. Uh, the value of your husband. Mm. It's nowhere near what he thinks or how he feels. So you're able to say, guess what? Nothing is more important yeah. than our love yes. and sustaining our friendship yeah. and understanding each other. So mm. mentally, when you understand everything else is secondary, yeah. then you're able to deal with you're all able the to issues. Deal with yes, oh whatever it might be. That oh comes my God, are you, are you listening, guys? I mean, that, that is awesome. That is awesome. Because a lot of people would rather win an argument and in the process they lose a marriage. You lose a marriage. You know, you lose your marriage. Mm. So what you're saying here is that your marriage is really, you, you respect and honor that man. Yes. You put him in his right place. Right. That's what you're telling us. And, absolutely. And you know, I, I think this, when you're quoting, it's so easy to put someone on a pedestal. And then you feel afterwards, oh, maybe they didn't meet your yeah. expectations yeah. or but so then when you're courting you better know mm. who it is that you are you're courting and, and I say to university students yeah. I say to the boys don't pick the prettiest girl yes because she might not have her beauty tomorrow so pick the girl who's your friend the one you like the one you love who you can look at every morning happily wow. Wow. I say to university girls mm. Mm. To the girls, I say, mm. don't pick the guy with the biggest car. Yeah. Because he may not and have six a car packs. tomorrow. Yes. Mm. He may not have a, and, and mm. a six pack. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and it's just six pack. Because yeah. he may not have them tomorrow. He may not have a one tumbo, uh, one, one, uh, one pack one tomorrow. One jumping and castle. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so you pick the person who, yeah. again, is mm. your friend and who mm. you love and who has the values mm. and a vision. Mm -hmm. Both of you a vision for your life that's yeah. heading in the same direction. Direction, yeah. That's when it works. Because mm. a lot are looking at that. The wrong thing. The, 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 the wrong thing. Oh. He has to have a car. He has to have this. Yeah. He has to have this. And you can get those things and get misery. Even beauty, even a woman who you feel looks okay can be extremely beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, anything can happen. And, yeah. and uh, a young man who is penniless today could build an empire tomorrow. Whoa. Or even better, you could build wow. the empire together. Exactly, mm. exactly. Oh, wow. So now here you are married, you enjoy your marriage, your, your husband urges you on and pushes you on. Now, Julie, you're on, on air you, you know, and you go everywhere. I travel a lot. You travel a lot. Mm -hmm. How is that? Because we're going to now, you, you're going to tell us about uh, whether you have children and how many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But I now children. here you are traveling quite a bit. How do you, how are you able to balance between especially your marriage and the traveling? This, this for me is important. Mm. So I, I limit my trips. I'm okay. very clear about how long I'm out of the country for. Mm. It's very important to me, both for my sustenance, yeah. for my husband's, and for my children as well. Okay. So I'll do three to four days. If I'm being pushed beyond that, yeah. it has to be very important. There must be an important reason why it's going beyond that, or we will all travel together. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes he, he, he has been great and he's yeah. had to kind of work from, sometimes we'll travel together and, yeah. take, and, and take that time and he'll be doing a lot of his work on the phone yeah. and so, you know, we're together. So that doesn't happen mm. very often, but mm. when I have longer trips that have to be taken, mm. we do. You all go together. We do go together. That's when he takes his, his break, his, yes. his leave yes. Uh, yes. of sorts. Although when you are an entrepreneur, yeah. you never really have. Yes, you, you yeah, know? I, kn I know. But, but yeah. I know wherever you go, you're working. Yes. Oh, wow. But then that shows that he's a real family man. We he are. loves family. He loves, we love, we love family. And, yeah. you know, um, we have five children. Yes. So Kimosho is turning 13 very soon. Uh, Jerry's 11. Yeah. Our third born who, as you know, passed away. Yeah. In Mwara. Yeah. Um, he, he, he was uh, six and a half months mm -hmm. when he passed away in 2006. And, we, we, and we're going to talk about that. Yes. And we're going to talk about that. Uh -huh. We were blessed after that. Yeah. My heart was very 
empty in a sense my arms were empty and I mm -hmm. really did need to fill the void and God blessed me with two more sons so Daniel is seven and our little baby Joseph yeah he's three years old he's three already yes he's already three. He's three. Oh <laughs> it's just the other day yes. I met you expectant yes so he's already three so you only have one girl I have one girl okay yes. so t talk to us now so you have five babies we're, yes we've uh -huh. five babies yes what happened, the, the, the pain of, of losing a baby, what happened? Important to tell the story mm. so other parents know this. Yeah. He was being fed in the evening. It was a weekday mm. and um, it was a Wednesday. Mm. He was being fed that evening and the nanny was feeding him with his neck. Up. Yes. Mm. And uh, he choked. And I think initially she didn't realize he choked. And, mm. then, and then the other lady who is, is, uh, was there mm. realized and tried to give him, they tried to, to remove, to remove uh, it. Yeah. But um, they didn't have the first aid training. So it lodged even deeper. Um, he was rushed by the neighbors to the hospital. We were on the way home. Tony and I were together. Mm. Actually, he had picked me up and we were on the way home together. Mm. And they called us and we said, we'll meet you at accident and emergency just go straight we lived quite close to Nairobi hospital yeah and when we arrived at the hospital there must have been eight people working on him at accident and emergency and just trying to get his pulse back trying to pump whatever out, was, whatever was out, choking and they had to give him some adrenaline and by the grace of God they did get him back but I'll tell you in those moments mm. I went on my knees in that emergency room I went to the corner and I went on my knees and I said God, I, I'm going to make a deal with you. Mm. Please make him okay. Please make it okay. I will do anything. I will give up anything if you just bring my son back mm. to us. But I promise mm. you that if you choose not to, I will never hold it against you. If you hold on to me. Because I realized I can ask him and he can refuse. Mm. And if he refuses, my life will be over. Mm. I didn't know how I would emotionally survive this. So I said, if you hold on to me, I will never hold it against you. But you have to hold on to me because I will die if you don't. They got his pulse back. We rushed him to the ICU. And eight hours in ICU, we were seated by his side. And eventually, his heart just couldn't take all the adrenaline that had been pumped in his system. His heart just gave out, you know. And I stood there and I removed all the things that were on his little body, needles everywhere. And I wiped him down. And I handed him to Tony. And Tony held him and he sobbed. And they told us, you need to leave now. We need to take the body. And we had to go home together and ask him in the car, how are we going to tell the other two that their brother is gone? And we went home and we got on our knees and he prayed. And I tell you, Kathy, that is a man. When you are able to, when you lose your son and you're able to go on your knees to God and, 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 and give him everything. So for us as a family, it was the most traumatic thing we've ever been through. Mm. But I think God has held on to both of us. Mm. And um, so it's, you know, I can't give an, you know, even today, as you can see, I grieve and I miss him. Mm. But I know I'll be with him again. And my life is very centered on the fact that when I go, the day I go, that when I get to the gates of heaven, that he'll say, my daughter, you did well, come in, and here is your son. You know, that's what I look to. Wow. Well, yeah. Well. So I've had, I've had people come to me and tell me who've gone through the same. And you know, you're really searching for a reason. Yeah. You're trying to understand why did this happen to me? Yeah. As a mother, when you lose a child, you know, you feel like going to that child because your responsibility is, you know, you are breastfeeding, you are holding the child, and it's very, very difficult. 
and only someone who's been through that journey mm. can understand nobody mm. else can truly mm. understand mm. and i've been able mm. i think and i believe to minister to to women and explain mm. to them even mm. i think in one case saving a marriage where she couldn't understand why i'm grieving every day and i'm broken but my husband is not broken he didn't love the child mm. and i said to her no he's being strong for you yeah. whose blood was that child yeah. it was his yeah. so you hold on to him and love him passionately for the strength that he has and in your love mm. he will be able to grieve mm. he will then open up and it did happen you know for them so it's a journey for a family and it can split you or it can make you stronger again it's a journey in the lord it can make you lose your path or it can make you stronger in the lord oh dear god we'll be right back after this break just pause there and minister to you that's watching us by television that maybe right now you could be going through a situation like that or, or, or deeper situations in life and you're wondering if you can ever make it I just want to encourage you to let you know that with God nothing shall be impossible and you need to just hold on to him because he says he will never leave us he will never forsake us mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter the kind of pain that you're going through right now, the person that held on to Julie and made her to stand, even in that situation, is God. Mm. And it will always be God. If you can allow him to take preeminence over your life, nothing will kill you. It's going to make you stronger to be an encouragement even to other people. So here you are, Julie. You've been now encouraging other people and letting them know it doesn't have to kill them. It doesn't have to kill them yeah. and you can be brave enough to, to have another child because yeah. that's the fear. Mm -hmm. And I remember initially when it happened, I said, and I just voiced this out loud to Tony, I said, I'll never have a child again. I can't go through this kind of pain. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said, if you believe in God, yeah. then that's not true. Yeah. We must continue to live. That's what he said. Yeah. And look, God blessed us with our, with our two following. Two. Yes, and, yeah. and our child who followed um, Moara, he's called Daniel Wangai. And yeah. we called him Wangai because we realized at that point mm. that children in Kikuyu, yeah. he's, of, he's, God's, he's of God. He's God's child. Yeah. That, you know. Um, mm. And I also came to the understanding that we are blessed as parents, mm. but we also have a huge responsibility our exactly. role is to nurture and grow children of God, mm -hmm. but they are His. Yes, they are. So what do we do with our children? Yeah. As you're doing whatever you're doing, the yeah. children, that yeah. child is not yours. Yeah, that child is God's. That child is God's. <laughs> and if like we, we all are, like we mm. all are, and if we see our children that way, then we understand and appreciate so much more the gift. Yeah. that they are. Yeah, I, I thank God that you're uh, enjoying your marriage and mm -hmm. you know enjoying your family, and I, I thank God for especially the way you put your family at the forefront. You know, my daddy went to be with the Lord about two months ago, I know, so, so I know I know that pain. Mm -hmm. I, I know, uh, man, you can't even explain it. Uh, for somebody that you love so dearly, love so dearly. But one thing he told us, he told my husband and I, he said, if you honor your family, God will always be on your side. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. And you know what? It's so true. Because if you're a family person that really puts family first, God will always fight for you and even give you that strength to carry on mm -hmm. in such pain. Let's talk about this. Yes. Let's talk about yes. this. And I'm in particular talking to women who are probably career women. Mm who think you have to make a choice between family and career. Yeah. You don't have to make a choice. Mm. You can have both. And in fact, I, I really, really believe yeah. that when you have family, it sparks a fire in your belly mm. that makes you work harder, that makes you focus more, yeah. that grows your career even more than you can imagine. Come on. So when you sit in those interview rooms and you're made to feel as if there's a choice, yeah. feel free to tell them, listen, yeah. I am able to meet every I expectation the, yeah. and need yeah. that you have here. Yeah. But I have a family, and yes, my family is yeah. important to me. Yeah. And I think employers who are listening as well, 
the loyalty you get from a family woman who is dedicated to her family Whoa. compared to someone who is dedicated to nothing yeah it's completely different. It's different. It's a different ball game. So hire the woman yeah. who has a family. Yes. Hire the woman who yeah. is a she may have children and you may be worried about yeah. that but if she's committed and dedicated to her family what kind of employee will she be also she will to be you? So she will good. be committed and dedicated. Exactly. So I, I grew my career mm. D when I had five years children in the span of what eight nine years mm. and each time my career was going growing. higher. I give God the glory because yeah. everything I have achieved is his and he has made me understand mm. that family has to come first. So at pivotal times where I've had to make choices, there's some big choices I've made, yeah. family has come first. Yes. I've been offered international positions. I wouldn't go and live away from my family. Wow. I wouldn't want to bring up my children outside of Africa. Mm. In Europe or the US. So those responses have been fed by, my, and at no point do I feel as a woman yeah. that I have lost anything I always gain. So sometimes wow. you may have a decision to make. Yeah. If it doesn't benefit your family, don't move with don't it. Oh Further down the line, oh. Oh. Further down the line awesome. the blessing will come. Yeah. And it will come in the right way. Uh -huh. In a format that fits yeah. for the family. So my dad was right. He was. <laughs> your, da your dad was a wise man. He, he was he such was a wise man. man. So when family is first, it is so key in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you've put your family, Julie. First, first, first. And, yeah. and you know what? Uh, I needed to go breastfeed my children. Yeah. I was told you have to do A, B, C, D. I, will, I made sure I found a way to do it early. And then I've done it. Mm. I'm going to do what? Breastfeed, breastfeed. my children. Now, you need me back in here for the news at that time? Yeah. After I finish with my children, I'll come back. No, 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 no. This is not the way we do things. We expect you to stay. No, but I've just created a format that works. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I've solved the problem. <laughs> so what further problem do you have? Oh, wow. Well, this is woman without limits. I know that you're being blessed already. I know that you've taken a lot of notes to understand that your family must be first. And this is what Julie has done. Now you know two things, three actually, maybe four, about Julie that you were suspecting. It's all in the limelight right now. And woman without limits. And Julie has been talking to us about who she really is and so we thank God for you, Julie. Thank you. And we thank God that your marriage is out there working, you know. And, and so we thank God that today you've heard where she's coming from. And really what you can learn from this is that you don't have to sell yourself short. You don't have to allow the enemy to drive you wayward and to do weird things that you live to regret later on. Understand that you are a woman without limits and nobody can limit you but you yourself. Doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter whether you grew up with a spoon and, and, a, and a fork, a knife, fork, spoon, you know, all those beautiful things. Don't worry about that. It is you that can make a deliberate choice to change and alter your destiny from today. You are a woman without limits. Ladies, how else can I put it? Yeah. See yourself as a precious jewel. Mm. You can decide that you want to be worn by everybody and, and you end up all withered and, and, and finished. Or you yeah. can decide, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to treat myself with as dignity something. and yes. honor. You know, I always tell my hubby, I have carried and pushed five babies for you. Yeah. <laughs> five. <laughs> this is my time to look fabulous. <laughs>